Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to another Hobby Collab tutorial. I'm going to teach you how I went about painting this Wilderfiend with war paint. Uh, so first things first, you're going to prime white. Um, I used Molotow white. Um, then you're going to base coat with Vallejo model color Pull Red. This is a reddish brown color. Um, it's a great base coat if you're starting uh, skin tones because it's got this nice warmth to it. Um, make sure you put a couple of coats, whether you're airbrushing or painting with a hairy brush. Um, you want to make sure you have a solid base coat. Uh, then you're going to grab Vallejo model color Salmon Rose. Now this is kind of a pinky tone. I mean, it's salmon color if you know what that looks like. But I'm sure you're looking at the video right now and you'll, you'll notice that it's quite white. Um, make sure you put a couple of coats. I found that um, just having one coat made this um, salmon not quite look right. Not the color it should be out of the bottle. Uh, so definitely make sure you're getting a solid coat on it. Um, once you're done with that, you know, obviously let it dry, leaving that whole red in the uh, deepest recesses. We're going to move on to Vallejo model color basic skin tone. This is much more of a, a skin color. Okay, so if you if you notice now that it's dry, you can see how pink that salmon rose is actually supposed to be. Uh, basic skin tone is going to be uh, basically our skin highlight. The way I want to use this is that I want to focus on the high areas making sure to leave that salmon rose and that whole red still deep in the recesses. Um, if you're not exactly sure where to go, think tops of head, tops of shoulder, uh, top of the back until it starts to arch back down, um, and some of the, uh, the hand. Now we're gonna mix Vallejo model color basic skin tone and Vallejo model color black, and we're going to paint the uh, uh, hands and feet um, you want to run this about halfway up the uh, leg and halfway up the forearm. Uh, sorry, halfway up the calf, I guess it would be more accurate. Um, you're also going to run it about, uh, you're going to paint about the last third to half of the tail. Then you're going to grab just pure Vallejo model color black and uh, just focus this on the hands and the feet, not running it up to the, uh, the, the calf and forearms and obviously the very tip of the tail. Uh, it's going to give us a nice gradient. Uh, I don't know. I think it looks nice. I don't know if this is necessarily war paint at this point. This is not the war paint. Uh, so yeah, that's what it should look like when that's done. Also, just a quick reminder, if you haven't already liked uh, the video, we'd appreciate it if you could. Also, uh, leave comments. It helps us out and, uh, you know, helps with the algorithm and all that. Uh, then you're going to grab Vallejo model color dark gray, and we're just going to do a little bit of dry brushing over those black areas. Uh, the hands and feet have uh, quite a bit of texture to them, actually. Um, especially the hands are quite veiny uh, and you know they've got the, the the wrinkles at the knuckles and stuff like that so we want to uh, make sure we're drawing it uh, drawing out the detail there you also want to do this on the tail but I would be a little bit lighter there um, I would just focus on what is upward facing so what would the light be catching there's not that much detail on the on the tail compared to the hands and feet then we're gonna grab Vallejo model color green gray uh, this is almost like a pale olive drab color and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to give it a pretty heavy dry brush over that gray. Um, and this just gives it this nice, almost like earthy tone back into the into the, um, the skin. Uh, yeah, so if you were to just leave it with that gray highlight, uh, it wouldn't look bad necessarily, but I think this just looks a bit better. Then you're going to grab Vallejo model color medium gray, and we're going to do a little bit of a lighter dry brush, focusing on the fingers, toes, uh, basically the areas at the, at the tips of the extremities here. Um, not a super heavy dry brush, we're just trying to uh, emphasize the previous colors by uh, adding a little bit of that gray, but still leaving some of that uh, green gray showing. Make sure you get uh, all the feet, all the toes. Um, you know, he does have a hand raised up, make sure you get that one as well. Uh, and a little bit of the tail. Now we're going to move on to some of the cloth. I use Citadel Barracknar Burgundy. This is a kind of a purpley red color. Um, the reason I chose this color is it's the rest, uh, the rest of my army is a similar uh, tone on their, um, on their cloth. Uh, you could also do something neat here with leather if you wanted. Um, I've covered le leather in other videos, um, but I think some a nice leather, uh, I guess, uh, bit of cloth here would be nice. Um, uh, this is just one of my favorite 
Citadel paints. Uh, obviously, you can see I use a lot of Vallejo, but this is one I'll always stick with Citadel. Uh, so now we're going to highlight it. We're going to mix a, a, a bit of Vallejo model color, bloody red, this is a pretty bright saturated red, into that Barracknar Burgundy. One to one mix is a good place to start. And we're going to highlight the cloth. So we're going to pick out all the uh, ridges and folds and uh, just to, to give the loin cloth here a little bit of uh, uh, definition. Uh, and then we're going to add even more of that bloody red. So about a two to one mix. Um, to get this nice pinky color, and this is going to be the final highlight for these. Uh, be a bit more sparing with this, uh, keep it within the previous lines of the one-to-one -one mix. I'm not really trying to emphasize the cloth here too much. Uh, this is not a competition painting piece, obviously. Uh, this is for army painting. All right, now we're going to get on to the actual war paint. Uh, you might notice this horns are green, just ignore that, we're going to change that later. Um, but I grab that Vallejo model color bloody red and I just start sketching in some basic shapes. Now what's great about war paint is that it doesn't have to be precise. It doesn't it have to have super sharp lines. Um, you know, it's paint, it rubs off, it, 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 you know, it runs when it's wet. Um, so just kind of draw a general shape you want here. I do a bit of a, he's got a little bit of point on his nose, it's kind of following the shape of his head. Um, I, did not, I, I looked up some reference, but I did not copy any real life, uh, you know, war paint or anything like that. So if there's, <laughs> hopefully this doesn't mean anything to, to any particular people. I just kind of went with generic shapes here. Uh, speaking of which, I'm going to draw some triangles here. Um, just kind of in a pattern around his shoulder delt area. You know, he doesn't have exactly human proportions, so... I tried to think like, okay, if a person had this, you know, this would probably wrap around the bicep tricep, or maybe it would uh, uh, go over into the deltoid, but you know, he's got weird elongated arms here. So I just kind of guessed. And so it goes over part of the, uh, the delt and into his armpit. Again, it's not a tattoo though, right? It's just war paint. You can put war paint wherever you want. Uh, I did another one on his other shoulder. I actually do some other uh, war paint later on because I just had so much fun doing it. Um, you also might notice some on his tail there. Okay, so the way you sell this effect as war paint is you go back with that basic skin tone and with a sponge, just sponge back in that flesh tone. So this sponging technique is something you'll see a lot on weathering vehicles. Um, but it works really great here for showing this chipped and scratched and weathered up war paint. Uh, so yeah, it's a, it's a <laughs> multi-use uh, technique here. And what it'll do is it'll just make it look chipped at the edges. Don't forget to do the face as well, or any other areas you ended up painting. Um, some areas might be more of that salmon, uh, that salmon, rose salmon color we did earlier. So, you know, if that area is more salmon, color obviously you would sponge with that instead uh, and then just to completely finish the effect I grab a very small brush and I just draw some scratches micro scratches into the paint usually starting from the edges just to really sell that you know it's been chipping away and that's uh, that's where you should be with uh, after the war paint obviously like I said I, I painted up some more you'll see that in the end um, but you know simple shapes are, are, are I think the best way to start uh, now we're going to finish blocking in uh, the rest of the model. Um, I paint the armor black, I do the leather black, the hair of these uh, <laughs> these decapitated heads are black, and then as I said, uh, you might notice the horns are green right now. Uh, they're magically going to turn black in a second, because uh, I just felt like the black would look much better. I, I didn't hate the green, but I just felt like the black looked a little more sinister, and uh, this, you know, <laughs> this guy's nothing if not sinister. Um, so we're going to return to the dark gray, um, and uh, actually not return, this is the first time we're using dark gray, excuse me. We're going to use dark gray to dry brush uh, the black here. Um, this is a little bit of a colder gray as opposed to the gray we used on the hands and feet earlier. Now we're going to use uh, French Mirage Blue. Now this is just going to be on the tips of the horns and uh, the most, uh, the ridged part of the horns on the front here. Uh, it gives a nice, you know, uh, a nice little fade up upward. Uh, then we're going to grab Pro Acryl Jade, and this is going to be for the armor bits. He doesn't have much armor, but this is how I would paint the black armor. Uh, start with Dark Jade, Dry Brush, um, and then you're going to use uh, standard Pro Acryl Jade. 
uh, and dry brush over that. A little bit lighter, leaving a little bit of that dark jade showing through. And then who can guess what the third one's gonna be? Bright jade, hey. Uh, bright jade, this is gonna be even uh, lighter. It may look like I'm doing a lot, but I'm, much, I'm doing a much less pressure uh, uh, as I paint those. So he's got this um, baboon lip flip thing going on. So I paint that with Citadel Pink Horror. Um, you know, use your preferred pink. This is the this is the pink I like. I probably could have gone brighter, but I, I just like this one. I think it's a nice. It works nice with the rest of the model. Um, <clears throat> so we he does have some leather straps here, and I'm going to keep it quite simple. Just on the edges, I'm going to do some scratchy highlights with MSP Harvest Brown. It's a very orangey brown. Um, you, you could do a bit more with this, but I'm just trying to, de to define the edges of these leather straps. Uh, that's all I'm really concerned with here. Um, and the reason I do scratchy um, highlights like this, edge highlights, is because, one, I like the way it looks, but it's also nice in that I don't have to draw straight lines, <laughs> so, uh, which is something I'm not very good at. Um, He's got these decapitated heads. We're gonna finish them off by putting a little bit of Dreadful Visage. This is a grayish purple contrast paint. Helps sell the dead effect. You know, it doesn't look like they have any flesh in them. So um, we're actually about to enter a heavy wash zone. So uh, before that, let's take a look at our model. Looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with how it is now. Um, but we're gonna do some heavy washes with some enamels and stuff like that. So. First, we're going to put AK Interactive Gloss Varnish. Two coats is probably good. Um, this is just gonna help the uh, the washes flow into recesses easier. Um, then we're gonna grab AK Interactive Rust Streaks, and we're gonna put this on the armor. So he has this little thing on his uh, back. There's one on the front as well. He also has this um, gauntlet thing on his on his arm. I, I guess it's not a gauntlet because it doesn't go over the hand, but this uh, forearm armor. And then for the skin, we're gonna grab Windsor Newton Rose, uh, thinned down quite heavily into a wash, and we're going to apply this first into the recesses, focusing on things like uh, the, the muscle definition, uh, and also this area where these spikes are poking out, so it looks real irritated and gross. Um, but then we're gonna apply a uh, second and maybe even a third coat to your taste, and we're gonna apply it over the entire model just to give this model this like pink, uh, almost like raw flesh, or irritated flesh look over the entire model. Uh, but again, the first step is you're going to really emphasize the uh, the muscle definition first. All right, once that's dry, you're going to grab AK Ultra Matte Varnish. And uh, once that's dry, that should leave you with this. Here is our war painted up Wilderfiend. Uh, I, listen, I am very happy with how this came out. Uh, I was not super confident going into this model. I'm not great at painting skin. This guy is mostly skin, uh, but I'm very happy with how it came out. I think the war paint helps a lot. Um, it sells this, you know, this really like tribal monster effect. It's, it's super cool. I love this model. Anyway, uh, I'll close this up for today. If you enjoyed this video, if you learned anything, we'd appreciate any of the support you can give. Like, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your enemies. We also live stream multiple times a week. We also play AOS, what this model is for. So uh, hopefully we'll see you guys then. Uh, until then, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.